Chester Bennington, Dave Phoenix Farrell, welcome to the show, gentlemen. How are you? Good, thank you, Frank. Very good. Marvellous. Lovely to have you here. You've just performed your new single, What I've Done. Uh, can you tell us, I mean, like, it's a, it's a huge-sounding song. I've watched the videos where it's got real epic quality to it. What's the song about? Well, the song um, kind of is about, you know, uh, reaching a point in your life where you're kind of looking at where, where you are and, and the events of your life, and some of them are negative and some of them are positive, and it's just kind of accepting them you know, the bad ones and the good ones uh, and for what they are and, and kind of moving on. Now, the record, I mean, from, from what I've read and what I've heard so far, it, it's, a bit of a, it's, it's a bit of a move from traditional Linkin Park sound. Is that fair to say? Uh, with this album, we definitely wanted to present what the, you know, the elements of our band that we feel are very important, but do it in a different way that's, that's not obvious or expected. And, uh, and that was really a challenge because it's very easy for us to go in and write songs like that could easily fit into the Linkin Park sound yeah, yeah. or like a new metal kind of sound. And that was something we, we, we wanted to kind of break out of that barrier. And so, um, you know, we, we really focused our energy on, on, on doing that throughout this process. With the writing process, I know predominantly you've written most of the lyrics over the last couple of albums, right? Or, no, you know, no? it's a really a mixture uh, between Mike and, my, and myself. Um, he was coming up with some great material, so there's, there's quite a bit of work done by Mike. Yeah, yeah and he co-produced the record with the legendary Rick Rubin, right? And, right. you know, I mean, Rick, you know, for people at home who don't know, Rick's done, you know, U2, Run DMC, some fella called Johnny Cash, Beastie Boys, you know, I mean, it's, it, literally, it's a veritable who's who. What was it like actually working with him in the studio, all that kind of, that, that musical heritage there, just, you know, in one room with you guys? I think that the greatest thing about Rick is he, he creates an, a really easy atmosphere of creativity, and he doesn't have, he doesn't have, like, a working set of tricks that he does when he's producing an album. It's kind of just... He'll, he's willing to try anything and he's willing to just listen through anything and, and see where it goes from there. You know, some of the other producers that we've worked with in the past, great producers, but they have kind of a, a setup or a way they go about doing things know. that creates their sound on an album. I read Rick's, something, Mike, saying you, you, you could open every door with him, basically. Yeah. You know, if he didn't work, yeah, you just the, come back out, kind of. Really, uh, you know, from the very beginning, he was like, you know, we're going to take our time and we're going to do this and it's not done till it's done. And that really kind of helped us feel comfortable to go in and, I mean, write 150 songs. I was going to say, right, so there's, there's like 14 <laughs> months you guys were in there, is that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That's a phenomenally long time to do, you know, to, I know you're perfectionists, but, I mean, that's that's a phenomenally long time to, to, to make an we, album. We took it to a, a whole new level. We were trying to figure out how you whittled it down. We were thinking perhaps paper, scissors, stone. You know, how do you get down from 150 Sometimes tracks? Sometimes it kind of felt like that, yeah. Yeah, every stage along the way, you know, every week there'd almost be a vote whittling down and kind of categorizing different songs in different sections and what... You know, what's the best stuff that we like the most? What's the stuff that has promise but needs more work? And what's the stuff that maybe is okay but we're kind of ready to set aside? And we just keep categorizing it, categorizing it, categorizing it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now tell me, uh, it was recorded at Laurel Canyon at the Maison, the, the, the world-famous, world-renowned. What was it like, you know, working... I mean, for, for people at home first, actually, can you just give us a brief history of that, that, that venue? If you ask each of the guys, you'll probably get a different bit of history on that house because it's, it's a little bit sketchy as to whether it was Houdini's house for a while or whether it was his mistress's house or even prior to that I think it was like Bugsy Siegel owned it right. etc etc but it's an old uh, kind of an older area of LA which basically means like 80 years yeah. as opposed to the rest of the world <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's way I'm old it's like a landmark it's seven years it's, old I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. like 80 85 years old so <laughs> just ancient it's the biggest little house in the world right, okay it's like this you, you walk up to it, it's this huge Spanish style, you know, villa, and it's like this great property. And you go inside, and it 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 literally feels like kind of almost like you feel restricted in it a little bit because all the hallways are like super narrow, and the rooms are just really weird. And there's no really open space except for the drum, the main room where the drums and, and the guitars and stuff are set. It just has that kind of feeling like some. Bad stuff. Pretty well. Like, <laughs> none of us were comfortable spending the night in the little upstairs bedroom there. I don't they had this. They point. had this room that was a, that was set up sometimes as a vocal room, and then there was like this little <laughs> square door back in the back of the room, and it opened up to like this. It was kind of odd. Like it looked like a little, like you put the, the gimp room. You put the gimp the in gimp there. Room, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me at the Maison, basically. Yeah. Um, more from you guys in a minute. Uh, we're going to go into a break. Great. But first, it's time for another exclusive.